we've been looking at the different ways that Jesus prayed and how that can impact our prayer life. And one of those prayers that we see in Mark 10 is Jesus giving a blessing. I don't often think about a blessing as a prayer. As a pastor, at the end of a worship service, I, uh, I give a blessing to the congregation. But it's a little bit awkward. I've seen some pastors do like a two-finger blessing, and I've always thought, am I supposed to do that or just raise my hands? What am I supposed to do there? And the congregation, when I give that blessing, they're never sure how to handle it. Is it a prayer? Is it just words spoken? Are they allowed to keep their eyes open or is it eyes closed, head bowed? Everybody gets nervous around a blessing. Well, I want you to know that a blessing is actually a form of prayer. And in Mark 10, we see this special blessing. Jesus is very busy. He's been with his disciples and they're, they're going through the community and they're, they're blessing people and healing people and they're pointing people to, to a new way and a new faith. And, and as they're doing that, and as the busyness of the day is going by, some folks start to bring their kids to Jesus. And his disciples, well, you know, they, they, they recognize Jesus is way too busy for this. He's doing so many important things. He can't stop and just hang out with kids. But Jesus gets upset. He says, you've got to let these kids come to me. And he stops and he gets down with the kids. And, and the scripture tells us he, he holds them. And he puts his hand on them and he blesses them. And I want us to take just a minute today to think about a blessing. Because this is a type of prayer that is actually incredibly powerful. There are two words that are used for blessing in the Old Testament. One of them is this word, asher. And this word asher means to stoop, to bow down. And it's used of God. When you hear that phrase, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you, it's that word that they're using. It's saying, may God stoop down. May, may he come down to your level. May you know God's presence. And when Jesus blesses these children, he stops. He stoops down. He, he, he pushes back the calendar. He pushes back all the plans and, and all the programs that they had going on. And he says, no, these kids, they're priority. And he recognizes them and he knows them. He spends time with them. Now, there's a second word that's used. And this word is Barak. And the word Barak means to send you on your way. We have all kinds of uh, examples of this in the Old Testament. When a father would bless a son, he would send them on their path. He would say, this is how I see God blessing you and using you. These are the gifts that I see that God has put in you. And I can see this incredible future that God has for you. He has a plan and a future for your life. And it was sent with this blessing to say, now go in the way of God. And when Jesus uh, takes these children and says he puts his hand on them, he, he blesses them. He, he's sending them on their way. You know, for each one of us, we, we really long to know what God thinks of us. And that's sort of a hard thing to figure out. I mean, how do I really know what God thinks about me? Well, well the, what I do is I, I look for clues in other people. And I, I look at you and I say, well, what do you think of me? And, and, and in that, somehow, I see a little reflection, maybe, of what God thinks of me. It's not always a positive thing. But this, this form of prayer, this, this blessing, well, this is an incredible opportunity to reflect to the people around us the way God sees us. This is a chance to look at your, your children, but not, but not just children, even your neighbors and your friends. And to pray for them, but to pray for them in a way that blesses them. And by blessing them, I mean that you would, you would recognize them. You would know them. You would pause. You would, you would stoop down. You, you would spend some time praying to God, saying, God, show me what you see in my friend and neighbor. Show me what you see in these children. And you would recognize them. You would stoop down. You would remind them that they are God's son and God's daughter. And then... You would send them in the way of God. You would reflect back to them the way that God sees them. You would tell them about the gifts that you see in them. You would tell them about the ways that, that you recognize that they are children of God. And you would tell them about the hope and the future that God has for them. 
This is an incredibly powerful thing. And this is what I want to encourage you to do today. I want you to be on the lookout for ways that you can bless people. For opportunities to pray prayers of blessing. Now, it's a bit of a challenge. I often like praying prayers that are very silent. or I pray them all by myself in my room. But a, but a blessing doesn't work unless I, I pray it over somebody. Unless I, I take a minute and, and grab one of my kids and talk to them about the way God sees them and bless them out loud. As you begin to employ this type of prayer, it not only will change you and your life, but it will minister to the people around you. And as you do this, you begin to make an impact. Today, as we close, I, I want to pray a prayer of blessing for you. And I'm going to do it with my eyes open. Because it's okay to bless people and even pray eyes open. And now, may you know that you are God's sons and daughters. That he created you. That, that he planned every minute of your life before you were ever born. And may you know that no matter where you go, even if it's to the far side of the sea, to the depths, even there God's presence will go with you. And may you live out the calling that God has put in your life today and every day of your life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The sound of the little blue ball bouncing off of floor and wall. I wait with my racket in hand, goggles on. I stand ready to see that same sphere go from here to there to here. No matter how hard it's hit, it cannot escape the room. Could racquetball be the metaphor for prayer that we assume? Do our requests go no farther than the corner of our tomb? Or sitting all alone, aloud my soul groans with words and expression and others stop to question, is he talking to himself? Have we checked his mental health? This daily narration, this one man conversation, has he no dignity in his solitary soliloquy? Is, is prayer in the end just time we spend with an imaginary friend? Do these words, real and sincere, ever escape our atmosphere? Do they rise like a balloon or like GameStop to the moon? Testing, testing, mic check. Sorry about your ears. But I have to wonder sometimes, does anybody hear these pathetic and winding prayers of mine? Is it more than a dial tone on a hotline? After all, why pray if God is sovereign? He's got his plan and we're forgotten. He already knows what we're going to ask, so why burden ourselves with one more task? Look, we can be honest here among us. No need to front and act real sus. Come, find a seat. Don't make a fuss. When it comes to prayer, we're all on this struggle bus. But that's okay. You can just ask Yeezy. Nothing important was ever that easy. Because of God's grace, we're free to try. We're free to struggle, and this is why we're adopted children of the Most High. At first, we might say, we're busy all day. Too busy to pray? Like legless dogs, our days have no pause. If you only pray when you're in trouble, I've got news for you then. You're in trouble. Because prayer interruptions are not disruptions. They're just intermissions for your intermission. It's so easy to get distracted in prayer. Dear God. Wait, look over there. Sorry about that. Let me change tracks. John Calvin says prayer is the chief exercise of faith. So shake off your demons and exercise your faith. Give it some thought and make your spiritual workout long. Prayer biceps like an astronaut whenever you kneel, arm strong. It might be one small step for man, but it's a giant leap all day long. The Trinity plus me, 
3 and 1 is 4. Pulled into the eternal fellowship I adore. Into the circle of divine love when I pray. What a wonderfully fitting thought here on Pi Day. We pray through Jesus' mouth as it were. All the Father's love for the Son transferred. All His care and attentiveness for His righteousness covers our wretchedness. And we come as one of His children approved. Dividing walls in prayer removed. And when the well of my soul dries... His spirit, my words, supplies. One year now, person to person, cover your mouth and your nose. But the good news for prayer, even without a second dose, God's immune to COVID, so take off your mask and draw close. Be real with the one who knit your innermost. We pray and hear not from God and assume he is not there. But we realize he was the one speaking all along in our prayer. How incredible the thought that the creator of all hears our prayers and responds when we call. But even more so amazing is the truth that he is not just listener, but speaker for me. And the footnote Lewis says on every prayer we pursue. May it be the real I who prays. May it be the real you I pray to. So start simple. Start real. Mutter something brief. Sometimes all we can manage is, help thou my unbelief. Or the prayer of the beginner, have mercy on me, a sinner. Because prayer is the vehicle that God has designed to move his hand and redeem across time. God is prepared beforehand for us to join him in this epic plot. So why would we pray if God's sovereign? Why would we pray if he's not? So go to God each morning, first thing, make it so. When your knees hit the floor, Satan says, oh no. Let's cause a racket and all have a ball because prayer joined by God's grace breaks through ceiling and wall. This is no imaginary friend or a one-sided conversation. This is the listening ear of the friend beyond imagination. So right from your seat, God's words repeat and make complete this dialogue sweet. Our Lord meet and make prayer your heartbeat. I am so glad that you're joining us online and that we get to be a part of your faith journey. Whenever you're ready, we would love to get to know you in person. You can come join us any Sunday morning at 9 and 11 o'clock here at Advent Church. We would love to get to know you and for us to experience worship in person together.